So hey all, another project on the Camaro. In the fall, um, I noticed, um, it was probably back in October, I noticed that I had a couple of drips on the, out of the transmission on the floor. Um, it was transmission fluid on the garage floor. Um, so when I put the car away for winter, I made sure I put cardboard underneath um, just to catch any drips. And uh, the next time I came up here was probably about a month. And the cardboard was pretty wet. And uh, I let the car sit. I, and uh, another month and the cardboard's just about completely saturated. So when I noticed it was, obviously it was leaking and it was leaking transmission fluid, I assumed, I took a, took a look underneath with a flashlight and it looked like the rear seal was leaking. And I had debated, uh, you know, I had the prop shaft out not that long ago to put U-joints in. And I probably could have put a rear seal in the transmission, but it looked like it was in good condition. And there's always kind of this debate. I mean, I like to fix things uh, that need to be fixed, but sometimes there's a strategy of leaving well enough alone. And, um, you know, peeling that seal out of the tail housing is, um, it's not hard, but it's not trivial either. There's tight clearances and so forth. And so I cleaned it up and put it together. Um, so I got, this, got a seal. I've got the car here up on uh, ramps and elevated so that I can get underneath. And uh, we're going to take a look and see what, uh, what we got. All right, so now that I'm underneath, Here's that uh, extension housing seal, and it looks pretty good. I mean, I put a little grease on it, um, so it's, I mean, it looks oily, but uh, there are no drips. There are no drips on the tail housing. There's no indication of any oil having been um, slung off the seal onto the, let me get a better angle on it here, uh, onto those heat shields. Um, that seal looks like it's in pretty darn good shape, actually. If I move a little bit further forward, uh, you can see this is the speedometer adapter. And this one still has a gear-driven speedometer. And um, you can see there's a drip there. So I think I'm going to pull that, have to pull that out and see what's going on. Uh, if you look at the rest of the underside of the transmission, um, you know, oil pan and so forth. Um, I don't see any oil anyplace else. Um, but, boy, there sure is a drip there. And uh, I'm going to get set up here and see if I can pull that out and see what we got. Well, I haven't had one of these apart in a while, but my memory of these is that I should be able to get in there and remove that cable just with a pliers or channel locks. I have been better with just a plain old slip joint pliers, but I do have a pan here in the event that it, a lot of times there is oil inside these, so I'll have something to catch the drips if we get some. So we're going to see what we got in here. Alright, so that's the core of the cable. Try to get that down out of the way. It certainly does look like it's oily. So we're going to see what we got. Get that off a little bit get a better look at it. Have to be careful because some of this 
Some of these parts are plastic. Some ten millimeter nut bolt here, I should say. Because these speedo adapters just have a little kind of a Y bracket and a so like that, just a bracket with a. 10 millimeter bolt on it. And then we don't want to break anything, but this has to be worked out of here. Looks like it's going to be kind of fun to, fun to pull out. Looks like it's plastic, so we don't want to break it. All right, well, I'm going to try with a pair of pliers, and I don't like to scratch things up, so I grabbed a piece of, um, it's a piece of PVC tape, and I just kind of want to see if I can keep from marring it up without getting on the threads. Try to get in here with just the, without the tape. Yeah, that sucker just don't want to move. Let's try down here. There it goes. All right, that's better. Because these are free to rotate, it's the uh, Y bracket that holds them in place. So when you put it back in, it's got to be rotated the right way so that the bracket will line up, which is basically there. So. Just tight quarters. I can't get get my other hand in here very easily. Well, I need to move the camera. Get it out of my way. All right. I got the. Uh, I got it out now. Once I get the camera out of my way, I was able to get in there and work on this tab with the pliers and with the other hand pull on the threads while I wiggled it. And it popped out and I got a little bit of fluid. So now we'll go out and take a look and see what, what this looks like. Alright, so this is the speedometer sensor and gear. And Let's take a hard look at that. The first thing I'll say is I don't see oil inside. Um, let's see if I can get a better look at it here. There's a seal inside, but I don't see any oil in there. Um, like it's leaking around the shaft, right? There, there isn't any oil there. So what does this O-ring look like? If I spin that dude around, it, it doesn't look real good right here, but that may just be for pulling it out. Take out the gear. I don't. I'm gonna say is that I don't see any damage on the O-ring once it's wiped down. I don't see any cuts. I mean, I'm looking at that pretty hard. I don't see any cuts or damage. So that's parts probably okay. 
And it's the correct part. It says 41 yellow. And that looks like a yellow gear. <coughs> now let's take a look at the gear itself and see if it's okay. There does seem to be some wear on the shank of it right up in here. And that section is a little smaller than the part with the screw threads on it. But that may very well be normal. I used to work on these things all the time. And um, take these sensors in and out. I worked in transmissions for a long time. And uh, before they went to electric sensors. It feels pretty good. And this end, this end looks, um, where the gear is, looks okay. I don't see any wear on that. This one looks like it might have a little bit, but right where the seal runs. But I'll have to put a dial caliper on there, but I don't think it's very much. I think if you look inside here, you'll see is there's a, um, there's a snap ring, and there's a seal. And I probably need to see what it takes to get that snap ring out of there. And get a get a fresh um, get a new seal. My bet is that that seal's got some wear on it, and the shaft down here on the gear where it goes through has a little wear on it, and it's seeping. And um, if you drive the car every day, it probably doesn't matter. If you leave it sit for a month, then it does matter because. Um, the torque converter holds oil and as it's parked the torque converter uh, the level in the torque converter gradually leaks down and the level in the sump goes up until the torque converter is like half empty that's its worst case so the sump can get pretty high which means oil could get in the back and into the tail housing while the car is parked and as soon as you start the car up, you're going to pump that oil back into the torque converter. And it won't be back in this area where it can leak in again. Leak again. So, well, I'm going to see what it takes to get a seal for that. And probably a new O-ring at the same time. And um, if that doesn't work, I may need to get a new gear. There is a little wear on it, but it doesn't look all that bad, so... I would think that should survive. Well, I'm going to go searching for parts back later. Well, now that I've got this apart, I want to see if I can get that um, get that snap ring and the bushing out of there. And see how this works. I don't want to lose this guy. Oh, maybe it's not as tricky as I thought because I picked at it a little bit around the edges I don't want to scratch the bore um, but there's the seal but I managed to move it enough that it's it's sticking up right there if you can, we can see it with the camera yeah there it is you can see that it's it's popped up it wasn't too hard out after all we'll put this pick underneath there and we'll see if we can get it the rest of the way out. Snuck it out of there. So you got a wire ring, and that wire ring holds that seal in there. And then I don't want to hurt the seal, I just want to pop it out. Alright, so that's what we got. That seal is a little a GM part number on it. There's a little bit of 
it looks like there's a, some damage to the seal. And maybe that's just... But right up here at the top, up here, let's wipe that down, see it maybe it's an optical illusion. So I get that. Um, you can see right in there that it looks like the edge of the lip is damaged. Right there. Like it's um See how nice it is all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, then you get to there and it's it's not right. Part of the lip is missing. So, so I have a new one of those ordered from Napa and I'm going to go down in the morning and pick, that up, pick it up and we'll try to put it back together and hopefully stop that leak. Well, I'm back today. Uh, to reassemble the parts for the speedometer um, where I had my leak. Um, it took me a little bit of work, actually a couple of weeks to get the right parts. Um, I had started uh, looking online at one of the local parts stores and they had a part on their website that looked like the right part. And uh, it was the seal that goes in the adapter. Um, but it was, when I went down and got it, uh, they did an overnight order for me and I had it and I went to pick it up in the store, but it wasn't the right part. Uh, if you go look at the catalogs, um, different parts lists, I'll say, for Camaros in the mid-80s, uh, there, for 700 R4s, uh, there are two different seals listed. And I don't know what the other seal is used for. Uh, it says it's a speedometer pinion gear seal, but it has a uh, it has a metal ring around the outside, and it's a little bit bigger in diameter. So um, I had to go. I, I couldn't pick that one up. Obviously, I couldn't buy that one. Uh, so I went back home and did some studying, and I ordered from uh, another parts store, and found uh, they had the one that matched what I had. Uh, the original actually was a GM Delco part number. Uh, the one now is an aftermarket part number, but um, I'm gonna, I, I'll show you here in a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down here on the bench and, and uh, show you how to reassemble this and get it ready to go and then I'm gonna go back out of the car and put her back together because now I've got the right parts. So before I start assembling, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. Uh, first, uh, this is a picture of what the new seal looks like. And uh, the video camera does a pretty good job, but I used my macro lens to get you a real close-up. And you can see what a new you can see what a new silicone based seal looks like. And you can note the lip and see that it's nice and smooth and and so forth. Now if you look at the other seal. This is a picture of the old seal that I took and you can see that it almost looks like it has two lips on it. I think that is really uh, an effect of wear. In other words, th there was quite a bit of wear on the seal and then you can see uh, a section of that I'll call the inner lip that is broken away and there's a gap there and uh, it looks to me that that is why the seal leaked. So. I'm going to install the new seal, show you how that goes together, and then uh, put her back in the car. So first of all, a couple things. Um, the parts I got are from um, a place called Pioneer Industries, their, their part number. Um, this one is the O-ring that goes around the outside. I can get it here where I can, can show you. Um, there's an O-ring for the outside. Then there's this part uh, number 76760010, and that is the, the culprit. This is the one that this is the one that we really wanted to replace. This is the one that was causing the leak. 
I have a little bit of petrolatum to lubricate things as they go back together. All right, so here's the adapter. This is this is the piece that we that I need to put back into the transmission, and in this opening is where that seal goes. So the way that works is, and again, I'm going to put just a little bit of lubricant on it. Put a little bit right in the bore. And then, I guess just for note, let's see here, I'll put a little bit of lubrication on this, on the gear. Um, I did measure, and there is about a four or five thousandths um, little bit of uh, reduced diameter here at this part of the gear. And I don't know if it was designed that way or if that's the wear, because it isn't um, a single wear spot in one location. It's, it's like this whole, um, this whole land in this section is a little smaller than the one on the end. But if I take that brand new seal and I just very gently put that over the end. Um, the nice thing is that um, the old seal felt loose on the gear, and this one has a drag. And I can even go down to the you know the, I'll call it the narrow part, and it has some drag. So I'm expecting that this one's going to seal. Um, so I'm going to set the gear aside for a moment, and. Add a little bit of lubricant in there. I'm going to add a little bit more to the seal. We want to put that in here with the lip facing inward. And just push that guy down to the bottom, which isn't hard. I mean, it's a silicone seal. It just drops right down. There's a retaining ring that holds that seal in. And I taped it to a... Uh, I taped it to a piece of paper so I wouldn't lose it while I had it out. It's, it's actually kind of an interesting uh, little little ring that if you lose that it's kind of hard to find. And so I didn't want to. Now, there is no groove inside here for that that ring fits in. It, it's just a friction fit. So what we want to do is push that guy in there being careful it doesn't spring out like so I took it out with just a a sharp um, tool very gently but so that gets it in there find the right tool here I'm just going to use a pair of long nose pliers small pair and just push that ring down. So that one goes, see if you can get a good look at it there, you can see that ring is just, it's just pushed down into the bore, up against the seal, all the way around, and it, like I say, it's a, just a friction fit that keeps that seal from backing out. It's a retaining ring, but it's, it's not in a groove, that whole bore is smooth. So, that's number one. Then the next one is, and I'm going to get a little, um, get my soft putty knife out here and see if I can get this, um, get this other O-ring off. that one off make sure that it make sure that it looks like the new one pretty close their color this ring has a, a blue color to it and the old one left a blue residue in the transmission so I was pretty sure they were the, they were correct the old seal the old o-ring was good but as long as I got it out might as well do it so I'm just going to put a little uh, petrolatum on that seal so that it rolls on easily and stays put. Lubricate up this gear.
and feed that. I mean, ultimately, ultimately this will this side will all be lubricated with transmission fluid, but you don't want the seal to go together dry. So we'll sneak that one in there. Actually, where that seal rides. When I was said it was five thousandths under, I was measuring back here, but looking at where the seal runs, it runs out here a little further, which is uh, has a little bit of wear track, but it looks like it's probably less worn than that five thousandths. So, so now she drops in there. You can see where the where it runs, turns easily and freely. That end will be where the speedometer cable adapter will go in. And this end goes into the transmission. So, Okay, I'm back under the car ready to put that adapter back in. You can see the cable is hanging there. Um, one thing of note is, uh, as I'm working here, I have the rear of the car raised up. It's up on ramps because I was going to pull the, the uh, slip yoke out of the transmission originally as well as having a jack stand under for a little more clearance here um, but had I not had I elevated the front of the car I probably would have had a, a lot of oil coming out of that open speedometer adapter hole the fact that the back is up so that the nose of the transmission is down is it, it looks like it dripped a little bit, but there's not a major leak, so just word to the wise, so to speak. It's rather tight quarters and difficult to get the camera in place, but that's the bore right there. That's where we're going to put it in. And uh, I'm going to set the camera back here so I've got enough room to work. Let's see if I can give you a little bit of a... Okay. It's a little tight squeeze here, uh, particularly for the camera. I have a very short tripod that it sits on, but it's very short. There is a bolt. The bolt location is up here where the bracket has to go. So we'd kind of like to get it in there and lined up so that the locking tab bracket is um, in the right place. So that means that I need to point it roughly this way. Everything is greased, so we'll slide that guy in there like so. There it goes. Now turn it and push it. Get my light in here, make sure that it went in right. Alright, that looks good. And it's not too hard to rotate, it's in there. Always best if you can put it in there by hand, not force it. So we'll put the, put the bracket on there and we'll see if I looks like I'm off a little off location just a little bit. So I'm gonna push that. Rotate it just a little. Yeah, that looks pretty close. Well, if that bracket will stay there, we'll get the bolt in it first here. Let's see if we can get it finger started. clearance for your fingers. There it goes. Okay. And it's dropped in the tabs. Roll her down my hand there as far as I can. Okay, 
snug that one down good and tight. cable back in there. There we go. I am going to put a pair of pliers on that and make sure it's snug because my finger tights are there's not a lot of room in here. You don't want to reef on it too hard because, again, it's plastic and aluminum, so you just want to make sure you get a good bite on it. It's snug. Alright. I think that's good. It's tied up against. Snug, bolts tight, I think we're good. When I finished buttoning up that speedometer sensor, um, I noticed something after I turned the camera off. And it almost appears that there may be a, also, in addition to that seal having been bad, that it almost looks like there's a hairline crack in the plastic itself. Uh, when I was just double checking things, I kind of did a little pull not real hard, but I just did a little wiggle on the end of the speedometer cable to make sure that it was tight and not going to flex um, and not going to move. And I saw a little bit of oil squirt out of a spot. I mean, it looked like a scratch. Um, but the fact that, the, that I got that little bit of oil come out makes me uh, suspicious, I guess. So I'm going to give it a try, see how it works. But uh, at the same time, I think I'm going to... Uh, start hunting for a replacement uh, speedometer sensor sleeve and uh, may end up sticking in a new one. We'll see how it goes.